Hey guys, it's Faces Sins, and we are back with more Verche Evermore continuing on Coffee's route, and it is quite literally his fucking route now because I didn't catch this when we ended the last part, but I did just now. In the end, Anko decided to come live at a doll face house as a guest. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna get batshit insane. Listen, that has nothing to do with what I said at the end of the last part of like, or is, does it count as like a threesome if you're sleeping with two people who are the same person? One's just the future version? I don't know. Uh, that had nothing to do with this line because I didn't even read it. I was like, okay, well, we transitioned, so we'll end. And now here we are. <laughs> oh, the shit that is going to hit the fan now. Fun times. Anyway, so in the end, Anko decided to come live at Adolfe's house as a guest. Anko and Adolfe. We headed to Adolfe's house with the two men walking on each side of me. While they were no longer arguing, the mood hadn't improved much from earlier. Listen, this is the weirdest harem route, but I'm okay with it. I've never seen Adolfe so angry before. No doubt it was due to Uncle provoking him, but I feel like that's not the only reason. Um, Uncle? What is it, dear princess? He smiled as if I were the only one in the world... Even without looking, I knew that Ovain had appeared on Adolfe's temple. <laughs> this is just going to keep getting better. Holy shit, this game is supposed to be traumatic. But it's moments like this that really like set you up where you're like, oh, this game is so great. I love it. We have good times. And then everything ends awful. Like everything is literally going to end up on fire. Eve's route flashbacks. Okay, but like everything is gonna like crash and burn and yet it's still so fucking amusing and fun like till we get to the trauma. You know what I'm saying? God damn. So the plan is for you to live with us at Adolfe's, but won't my presence bring misfortune to you and Adolfe? Uh, need not worry about that. Could not solve the mystery of misfortune befell us all. The night we met, I used my abilities to cast a spell to suppress your power. I'm assuming it's his blood. I think, you know, because he knows that... He knows Adolfe is never going to... A spell? Again with the insane ramblings. And just ignore him. Unko scoffed, saying Adolfe could never understand. I mean, he might someday. So... The reason nothing's happened to Adolfe is... Though luck has some effect, much of it depends on my powers. And you know what? He ain't wrong saying that. Like, much of it depends on my powers. But it's not just in sh the... Oh, oh, your power that you gave to me so that I won't make people sick. It's like, yeah, sure, that. But also, your power that Adolfe kind of also as because it's your 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 not you individual you as in the two of you as a group it's a powers you plural still my power does have its limits the effect will wear off after some time and you will again cause the death of others which means i don't have much time strange deaths that have been plaguing Cohen were still continuing if Mother or Adolfe were killed before we got rid of the curse, it would all be in vain. I was determined to do whatever I could to solve the case. Seeing Unko nod with satisfaction, Adolfe looked at him with a raised brow. If you have that kind of power, why don't you just turn her back into a normal human now? I said my spell is temporary. There are additional steps to be taken. It cannot be done overnight. It's interesting, though, because he knows the secrets of the country and, the, and all of this, but instead of being like, look, here's what you gotta do. Although, to be fair, even if he were trying to give us the answer, he gets redacted. So, you know, 
He's like, I can't give you the answer. The universe redacts me every time I try. You have to figure it out. <laughs> and genius, though, that, you know. While I had seen his amazing healing ability in action, Unko's response only gave Adolphe more reason to distrust him. Thanks to their argument, I felt the dark shadow in my heart clear. Perhaps Adolphe had a change of heart, as he told me he would be, be working with the Corps again on the investigation. I was actually happy he said that, since I was worried about Eve's condition. He's like, I don't want to stay in my goddamn house with this fucker there. So <laughs> <laughs> and Anko's like, I figured if I stayed in the house, he wouldn't be around. And then, like, we can get some alone time, girl. Hey. <laughs> uh, but seriously, this brings up an interesting, like, conundrum, right? So it is, like, if you're in love with someone and then their future self time travels back. And now you've got current boyfriend and future version of boyfriend. Is it, like, is it a threesome? Or, like, is because they're the same person? Is that, like, weird for, like, them because it's their future self? Like, like, is it... Are you polyamorous if you have two boyfriends? Is it really a harem if both of my boyfriends are technically the same person, one's just the future version of the current version? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like, you know? <laughs> Like, how does that work? So, like, is this the only way we get a harem ending? Where it's like, well, you get two boyfriends. They're technically the same person, but vastly different personalities. Because alternate, like, not really even alternate universe versions. You know, it's like, so it's like, uh, you know, I don't. A terribly small shack. You forced my dear princess to live in a hovel like this. It's funny because you say that and yet you know exactly where he lives because you lived here once too. I suppose the bedding is comfortable enough. Come here, dear princess. I'll sleep with you tonight and protect you from your nightmares. Well, um, I'm going to sleep on this bed over here, so... Get off, freeloader! Yeah. <laughs> As soon as Anko tried to coax me into bed with him, Adolphe mercilessly dragged him off. I do find it funny that Anko is like, come girl, let's snuggle up, babes. Like, Adolphe could never. <laughs> Current Adolphe could never. And the two of us are going to sleep in the corner so I can keep an eye on him. Wake me up if anything happens. But I feel like I'm being a freeloader too, so why don't you sleep? No way. Still don't trust this guy yet. Hmm. It's you who are untrustworthy. Your unseemly desires for my dear princess. It's kind of interesting because, again, again, some of the things that, Aunt, like, Anko hating on Adolphe makes sense. But saying things like this is questionable and weird. Like, your unseemly desires for my dear princess. Like, do, is that what... Do, you don't have any unseemly desires for me? Because, like, you're the same person. You got over those? Because, like, I'm just saying, Adolphe having unseemly desires for me is a point in his favor. You realize that, right? Like, the guests sitting on the floor swiftly evaded Adolphe's heavy stomp, seeing their lighthearted exchange. I don't think that's lighthearted! One of them's gonna get stabbed! <laughs> I began to laugh, the sad future in my mind quickly disappearing. I mean, I can't blame her for laughing at this, because I find it adorable, too. Even though I'm pretty sure they want to kill each other. Hey. Dear princess. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I couldn't help but laugh. You two are adults, but you're fighting like children. No, they, I've never seen you act that way with anyone before. And that's not exactly praise. I guess it's fine if you're having fun. Though I hate to say it, I must agree. Seeing me laugh so hard that my shoulders shook, they both smiled. Tears were starting to build in my eyes from all the laughing. These are the last tears I'll shed. Adolphe didn't have much time left to live. 
I had to look forward and find a brighter future rather than waste my time crying. Well, you're crying from laughing. That's different. Those are good tears, you know? After changing into my sleepwear in the other room, I climbed into bed so that I could be well rested and ready to and ready first thing tomorrow. I looked at the two in the corner who seemed reluctant to be so close to one another. I just want to wake up to them like cuddling because you know it was a little chilly. Good night, you two. Sweet dreams. Yeah, good night. Wake me up if you need anything. Adolfe responded as he usually did. A few seconds later, yeah, good night. Perhaps he was just about to fall asleep as Anko responded, responded quietly after a short delay. His voice was very gentle, unlike his usual voice. Even if Anko is the same death that cursed us, I still don't see him as a bad person. See, and I also think that too, like you just inherently trusting him, even being like, well, he seems shady and suspicious, but I kind of trust him. And like, everybody says he's dead, but I, I kind of don't think he's a bad person. That inherent trust is because there's something in you. Okay, again, I'm just going on this theory. That would see him as Adolfe, and you would inherently trust Adolfe too. You know what I mean? Like, it's like there's something inside you registering that, right? Again. Just, I'm just going to roll with this theory because it's way more fun. So I'm just going with that until the game tells me otherwise. You know, but. I was embarrassed looking back on how I once doubted him. When I have the chance, I'll ask him about the story passed down through Eve's family. And I'll try to cook something Anka would like to eat. I wonder if he likes eggs. Though I felt tense about what was to come tomorrow, I was also feeling exhausted gonna be interesting the day she cooks the stew and Anko's like oh I love this stew within seconds of closing my eyelids I fell into the world of sleep I'll say it again I still don't trust you like she does if you dare do anything to her I don't care if you're immortal I'm gonna keep killing you until you're dead for good You can rest assured that I would never harm her, though I cannot extend the same courtesy to you. Although it's funny, because, like, if you kill Adolfe, does that stop you from existing, or is it too late because, you know what I mean? Like, again, the version of Adolfe that existed to spawn on go no is, long like, you know what I mean? Like... You know what I mean? It's kind of like if you leap into the past and kill your past self, does that kill your present self? Or you leaping into the past and changing something like, oh, this moment here, this pinpoint in time is where your future self was created. Like Adolfe finding us dead is basically what set off the chain of events that would have led to Anko existing. So Anko stopping us from killing ourselves right now put Adolfe down a completely other path so Anko still exists okay so the chain reaction that would have caused him to exist didn't happen but he still exists so if he kills Adolfe now it's like well it doesn't really matter because the chain of events that set me into that set into motion me existing already happened even though I went back in time and changed things like, that's crazy. Like, you know, we don't know. Nobody's ever time traveled to know how time actually works. There's theories. And you think that changing something in the past changes everything, but you don't know. I mean, yes, it would, but there could also be alternate realities. And technically, in an Otome game, there are. You would have to believe in alternate realities because look at the changes, the choices you make depend get the ending and then you go into or how many each route you set even if there was only one ending for each route you have multiple routes you have multiple options there's multiple universes just right there right so this universe onko could absolutely kill adolfe because he's from a different reality so like not gonna affect him 
it would affect if there was an Onko in this reality, and now there already is one, and it's he's from a different one, so it's not. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So like, so if he doesn't kill a Dolphe, then there'd be two Onkos in this reality. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, who knows? I don't. That's too much for my brain to handle. But I'm just saying, like, you know, we don't know, and we're not supposed to think about the science of things. So like, maybe you're allowed to kill your past self, and it's totally fine because you're your future self is your present self and you already exist so but how is that possible <laughs> anyway uh... and that aside i doubt you have much time to be bothered by me i have heard your life will come to an end soon and but it's it's weird how he says things like this you know because that takes you out and goes well i mean like you would know that Adolphe doesn't, his life is not going to come to an end soon if you know that you are somehow a version of him, unless you don't realize that you are. Maybe Anko doesn't know who he used to be. He just hates Adolphe for some reason. But the way he hates Adolphe, like when they were having that argument in the last part, is very much like, I know who you fucking are, you son of a bitch. You're the reason why she died. You couldn't protect a goddamn thing and I hate you, past self. You know? But then there's things like this and you're like, that's not something you would say to your past self when you know damn well he's not going to die. You know? Unless you're trying to keep up a ruse, but it seems odd. So, huh. Anyway. If you sincerely do not wish to sadden her, I suggest you prepare to revive as a reliver. Unless there's some reason you're adamant against becoming a reliver. Shut up. None of your business. <laughs> yes, your life is of little concern to me. But if you wish to see a future where she lives, you must strive to do your very best, my dear normal human. If you're not yet strong enough to be the story no, you are not yet strong enough to be the storybook hero who can save her. Shut it. You don't have to tell me that. I already made my decision when she was a kid. Huh. Easier said than done, no? Chapter two. Ooh, and now we're Onko and... Oh, no, I think when we started chapter one and it was both of them together. Because it's both of them. Okay, yeah. Oh... Interesting. This is a very long story about a foolish woman who once ruled over the country. Before going further, why was the queen called a fool? Why are we suddenly talking about the queen? I'm just, I'm put, okay, interesting. The answer isn't too difficult to explain. It's rather simple, really. She met her downfall for being too honest. What does that have to do with anything? Like, I'm not like, why are we, why? That's pointless. No, my question is seriously, like, what does that have to do with anything? Because I feel like they don't tell us these things unless it is pertinent. So like, question mark. Interesting. Put a pin in that. I'll forget. Now listen up. You stay put until I come back. If you lay a finger on her... I'll chop you up and bury you in that field of lycoris noirges. <laughs> Why don't you do that, then? I shall stand by your bedside as I regenerate myself. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure Lucas chopped you up and killed you and you didn't regenerate, so... Did you? I don't know. I mean, there was a part where, like, he was basically, like, almost dead. Well, we never saw him again after that. We don't know that he died, but pretty sure it was like we we were pretty sure he died, but we don't know. Did we? I can't remember. Please don't do that. It'll be so much trouble to Eve. I couldn't imagine what he'd think if he saw blood and flesh strewn about his flower field. Imagine what he thinks when he sees your hair poking out because you buried yourself alive like a weirdo. The day after the arrival of our new roommate, the Watchman of Death... We made plans to discuss the curse that was consuming the country this evening. Adolphe decided to go out to shop for supplies, report to Mother, and return to the Corps for work. Well, I'll be going. And don't get too involved with that guy, got it? 
Really? You've told me that five times already. Adolphe changed into the core uniform he hadn't worn for days, and repeatedly warned Anko before finally leaving. After listening to his departing footsteps grow fainter and fainter, Now, time to search this house. It would be nice to find anything I can use against him. You should know exactly where he hides all his secrets. Come on. Huh? He swiftly began exploring the room. Search? But Anko... Anko's long robe dragged across the floor as he paid me no mind. His clothes are so drab. I had planned on borrowing a set, but nothing is to my taste. I mean, seriously, you really do look like a wizard in a fantasy novel. So this is where he keeps his belongings. Oh, is this a diary? Yes, I suppose I should leave this alone. Oh, <laughs> much heavier than I thought. It's so funny because you're poking around Adolphe's things like you have no idea where things are, what things are, and you're trying to figure him out. But yet you had that argument. This is where it's a little confusing. You had that argument with him as if you knew every little fucking thing. And she even said it. it's like you've been watching him his whole life. So that whole argument they had in the last part was like, my God, you know him and you are mad at him because he's your past self. And you were like, you suck past self. You're like, you know what I mean? Like, if you were given the chance to go back to a point in time in your past self and tell them off for being a dumbass, something that you did that you're still mad at yourself for, or whatever, if you could just go back and yell at your past self, what would you say? And that was that. That was that fucking moment. Okay? But then you have this, where Anko's, like, poking through, like, ooh, it's, like, going through stuff, like... I mean, to be fair... I wouldn't know, like, if I went back to teenage me, I wouldn't know where I hid things or what things were. Or, you know what I mean? I, I don't remember. Like, I didn't have a diary, but, like, if I did, like, would I remember where I hid it in high school? You know what I mean? Like, that kind of shit. So, it's like, you'd have to reacquaint yourself with that version of you. And to be fair, this version, like, Anka would be, God knows how many hundreds of years old. Like, he is ancient. He has been around for forever. He went back in time and like whatever. So he is so far removed from this version of Adolphe that like, yeah, he'd have to reacquaint himself. But it does, does seem odd that like then we have conversations like this or things like this where he's acting like Adolphe is like this strange alien being and let's poke around and figure him out when before you were yelling at him like, I know everything about you, you son of a bitch, because I used to be in your head. So, like, if we're going on the theory that they're the same person, that was like, I know everything about you. I remember all of this shit. And now it's like, I forgot. It's weird. Weird. So, like, there's definitely things like that whole scene, which made you think, like, they're definitely the same fucking person. Holy shit. No, fight me. And then there's stuff like this where you're like, well, I mean, like, maybe they're not, though, because, like, this is so strange that like i mean obviously anko's not gonna be like yeah no i know what you're thinking or whatever they're not trying to like hand it to you on a silver platter they want i think they're trying possibly lead you to that thought or like hint and maybe kind of sprinkle those crumbs in there but then they do stuff like this which is totally out in the opposite which even if you were slowly leaning that way would veer you off track so i don't know if it's just to veer you off track or to just you know, make it less obvious or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird, though, you know? Makes me question my thought process, but I still want to go with that thought because it's way more fun when they interact with each other, you know? How fragile humans are to have to wield such things to fight. He showed little concern for Adolphe's property. S Stop, Unko! You shouldn't be rummaging through Adolphe's room like this! I chased after Anko in an attempt to stop him from ransacking the places he pleased. And please put that sword down. You don't want it to cut your hand. If I did, I could heal it easily. But you still feel pain, don't you? Please treat, your, treat yourself with more care. It hurts to see you get hurt. Plus, the way I'm chasing after you, you'll probably end up stabbing me. How kind of you to worry. <clears throat> How kind of you to worry about an immortal monster. On 
Rinko, appearing satisfied, sheathed the sword and returned it to where it belonged. What was with him? I mean, that's a question. That's, that's, what is with him? I don't know if we're going to get that answer for a while. I had a very different impression of him now compared to when we first met. A lot more childish than I thought. It looked like he was enjoying himself as he wandered around the room. He said before that he was usually in the Lycoris field or in Hades, so maybe he was just curious about normal human life. Maybe it's been so long since he had a normal human life he vaguely remembers it, you know? By the way, dear princess, would you happen to see any matches around? I have a fancy for smoking tobacco. Really? Really, Anko? Really? I mean, again, you were over there like, oh, those wanton desire, whatever he called them, about, like, Adolphe, and, like, you don't have them. Um, point for Adolphe. Another point for Adolphe, he doesn't smoke, sweetie. Gross. Tobacco, a type of plant whose dried leaves can be used for smoking. After its rise as a luxury item, its use was spread throughout the world. I'm really surprised that you don't know what a puzzle is, but you totally got smoking now. Just saying. Tobacco? Was he really planning on smoking? I think the matches are here. Do you really smoke? The Watchman of Death, smoking tobacco. I mean, maybe it's also one of those, I can't die, so, like, whatever. I feel like if you, like, all of a sudden figured out that you had, like, superpowers or something, like, or, like, all of a sudden you're like, I can't feel pain, like, that, that's that got to do something to you. Or, like, you can't die. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm, I'm immune to the curse, I'm immune to disease, whatever, like, you're probably at some point going to lose your fucking marbles and test your limits. And you're like, fine, then I guess I'm just going to smoke. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, fine, I'm just going to have all the cholesterol. I don't give a shit. It's not going to break my chest. I'm not gonna, it's not going to break my heart. You know what I mean? Like, like, all right, whatever. Because like at some point it's got to get fucking tedious living forever. You know what I mean? I have to admit, I'm surprised. I happened to come across some long ago. I indulge in the pleasure now and again. Well, I suppose if you smoke outside... Adolphe hates the smell of tobacco. See, and it's kind of funny that... Complete opposite here. And I feel like this is supposed to be like, Oh yeah, they can't be the same person. No, but you would change. And that's how drastically things have changed over the... Hundreds of years slash centuries that you've been alive. Who knows? To be honest, I don't know much about it myself. Do you like the way it smells? Does it taste good? And that is difficult to answer. I simply enjoy the smoke itself rather than the aroma or flavor. It's hard to imagine. I reflected on the strangeness of tobacco while handing Anko the book of matches from a nearby cabinet. And thank you. Since I won't be smoking in your presence, may I borrow this for a while? Oh, you can have it. Some vendors at the marsh gave them out for free when you buy something. Gift for me. How wonderful. I will keep it safe for all eternity. The matches won't live as long as you do, Anko, so please use them while you still can. As I responded jokingly, a thought suddenly came to mind. Um, Anko, since you're here, there's something I wanted to ask. How fucking old are you? That's it. After tucking the book of matches inside his pocket, he went to sit on the bed. A while ago, I met a person named Eve who's following his family tradition of keeping watch over the field of Lycoris Noirges. Seeing his reaction confirmed my suspicions. Ooh. Yeah, he has a little shock face. He told me a story that was passed down to him about the involvement of death. I took a deep breath to relax my tension. Ungo, was that you by any chance? I finally got myself to ask what had been on my mind for a while. Are you just not going to tell me? He is beautiful, isn't he? After a few seconds of silence, Anko... Ah, uh, I see. So you have encountered his bloodline without incident. He shook his head to tell me not to worry. Interesting. You are correct. I am the very person who asked his ancestor to grow the Lycrises. I felt myself break into a cold sweat. R really? But to us, it was a matter of life and death. I was taken aback by how he so casually affirmed the truth behind the old story. But again, 
we now know the truth, she still doesn't. And the characters in the story still don't know the truth behind the Lycrises. You know? Anko must have understood the intention behind my question as he hit his mouth and chuckled. I hate to disappoint, but I am not the one who cursed this country. Huh? But according to Eve's family, stories passed down through generations will often change to something else in time. Anko told me he wasn't sure how much he could share with me, but continued nonetheless. How much is going to get redacted? The first ones to nurture the Lycoris Nuages in this country were the Beep family. What is, um... I don't know what Eve's... Well, well, no, it wasn't his last name, Noirge. So that fits if you don't have the S, like Noirge is, the Noirge. N-O-I-R-E-E. -E. Yeah, okay. Right? Because isn't that what his, didn't that what we fit, like his last name is? Because it's like, the same as the Lycoris stuff? Like, okay. The Lycoris is usually bloom in Hades, but I'm surprised that that's redacted if it's Eve's family. Because we already know that now. So I understand certain things, but like, okay, no, I get, I guess it, I, I get it. Be, we know that, but she doesn't still. So like before, when you're saying you're basically like a fucking flower, you have the poison of the flowers or whatever, he couldn't say that because she doesn't know that. We as the player do. She doesn't know that yet. And this you wouldn't know because I don't think it was until later in Eve's route that he said that there are no like Eve Noirs or whatever, and you're like, oh, uh, okay, that makes sense. So, although I do find it weird that they would redact that here because I don't think like knowing his last name or saying the Noirs family is like, <gasps> because you already know that Eve's the keeper and like, if they said the original keepers were the Noirs family, you'd be like, okay, unless it's somebody else. Anyway, the Lycoris is usually blooming haze, but the flowers there blank grew were exceptionally beautiful and I was mesmerized at first sight ancestors their ancestors is his ancestors but there yeah maybe flowers their ancestors grew were exceptionally beautiful and I was mesmerized mm -hmm. something like that maybe uncle spoke through the unknown interference reminiscing about the past which is why you asked them to grow the flowers? Indeed. Uh, but do not misunderstand me. I did not threaten him with the curse. The noble, whatever, agreed with our contract. Noble something. Hmm. It is true that I referred to myself as the Watchman of Death back then, but... It seems that time has warped the truth and turned me into death itself. I see. If Anko had introduced himself as death when we first met, I would have believed him. Because death was the country's primary enemy, there was no attention paid at all to the Watchmen of Death. So the Lycris Nuages don't have anything to do with the curse? It is true that death is hastened when they wilt, but it would be difficult to say they are the root cause. By the time I formed that pack... Pact. Sorry, the bird is in my esophagus again. By the time I formed that pact, the country had been eroded by the curse for hundreds of years. I'd like to share this information with the researchers at the Institute as soon as possible, but I'm not sure they'd believe me. I'd sense... I... Oh, I didn't sense that Anka was lying, and his explanation did make sense. Even if he knew more useful information, it was possible that he wouldn't be able to tell me without the message being disrupted. My naive hopes that he might be able to lift the curse were dashed, but I'm glad Anko isn't the source of the problem. A side of me was relieved that I wouldn't need to bear some sort of grudge against him. I can't believe that a promise made so long ago is still being kept today. It's so wonderful. Let's go see Eve! I kind of want to say let's go see Eve. Like, I mean, here's the thing. It's so wonderful. Like, it is wonderful, but I want to say let's go see Eve, because, like, you know, 
you know from Lucas's route when Lucas kill almost killed Eve and we thought he was dead that Anko looked distraught. And it's not just because well, I mean now we know. I mean it could have really could have just been because oh, you know, I knew your ancestors and you're supposed to take care of the flowers that are supposed to like heal everyone type of a thing. But I think it's more like you're my little bestie and I love you, you know what I mean? So and, like, now they're kind of tied together, so I kind of, like, I kind of want to go see Eve with him. That might not be the right answer, but I kind of hope it is, because I kind of want to go, so. No, it's it's so wonderful. Damn it! It's so wonderful. Were you very close to Eve's ancestors since you formed a contract with them? I guess because if you're like, let's go see Eve, he's like, why would you want to go see another man? I just wanted you to see your bestie. Well, okay, you can't really... Eve can't be your best friend because Hugo will beat you. Eve belongs to Hugo. No, it was a single encounter, and I no longer remember his name or face. But if I had not met him, I might not exist today. Though it may be one-sided, I've always considered him one of my dearest friends. Unko narrowed his eyes nostalgically. From what I heard, it sounded like he threatened Eve's ancestor to protect the Lycrises or he'd strengthen the curse, but I couldn't imagine the person in front of me actually doing that, so there must be another reason. I don't know, he's kind of threatened a dull face, so, like... I feel like he might. I think he's a romantic, surrounding the country with the flowers for the woman he loves, and the marriage proposal must be coming soon. Yeah, and he's doing it for us, so that's adorable. <laughs> and I hope that she can accept it. I mean, and here's she's... It, here's Okay, she's going to ask this, but it's also like, he calls you his dear princess. Did you ever maybe... Okay, this is where... These are the moments where, girl, now you're being dumb. I mean, I wouldn't assume I'd be like, huh, that's crazy. But she has no clue now. She's being totally clueless. Um, did you form the like the like risk contract for the sake of a woman who was special to you? The question had a hint of curiosity. Well, who knows? He smiled bewitchingly, because it's us. Duh. I mean, because he's Adolfe. Adolfe is in love with us, absolutely, and we know it's all about us because we're the main character. So you're not gonna have someone like. Anko in here falling in love with somebody else and, like, doing all this for somebody. Like, that's just silly. But I like how he calls us his dear princess and partner, and yet she's like, did you do this for some woman? That's sweet. And, duh. Girl! Girl! Learn math skills. Lucas, you fail as a teacher because you did not teach her basic math. She can't do two and two. You're investigating the incidents in the country's curse at the same time. Well, no, that is quite a handful. I'm glad to hear you're going back to the core, but why this all of a sudden? He had stopped by to give her a quick report. After hearing her foster son's next course of action, Sister Salome paused midway through uh, sewing Spacey's clothes. Absent from his report was that the suspicious Watchman of Death would assist him in discovering the truth behind the curse. Even worse would be revealing that the shady character was now living with Spacey. She would throttle him if she found out. And there's a possibility that those incidents occurred because of the curse. I'm coordinating with someone else who's willing to help. Adolfe was selective with his words, and it seemed that Salome was satisfied as she nodded in response. Well, yeah, because she's got shit to hide, too. Which one of these motherfuckers doesn't have a skeleton or six in their closet? I heard there have been more deaths near the hospital where Lucas's younger sister was admitted. I do hope the child and those at the hospital remain safe from the danger. Yeah, and there's been increasing unrest and reports of crime because everyone's afraid of what's happening out there. I've even heard of some prostitutes going missing in certain areas. And please be careful, mother. Some whores got kidnapped. Be careful, mom. <laughs> I know what he's saying. Yeah, there's a lot of crime. There's this. Some prostitutes have gone missing. I need you to be careful. He's just listing all the things. But it is just weird to tell your mom to be careful right after you talk about prostitutes. Just throwing that out there. 
And we know that I just I do love though that the prostitute's going missing. Absolutely, Jamil. Okay, we've got the suicides. Probably Capucine creating clones that can't handle thing, and then their hearts explode. Whatever. Okay. Although it happened to Hugo, but it also had to do with I thought with Hugo and his heart. It was because of us, though. It was like Hugo. His emotions were too strong, but also we had so much toxin in us and it was the combination. So Hugo kind of was our fault, but I thought the other people, it wasn't necessarily because it's not just the fact that they're all, this is all happening at once is a little too coincidental. And the fact that then, you know, Cyan wants the bodies to investigate and Boro goes and stabs motherfuckers and steals their hearts. So like, you know, you got Campesine maybe creating clones who have faults so that Cyan looks to blame. And Cyan has no bodies to prove it wasn't him and it was a stolen machine. Right? And then you've got Lucas stabbing people and ripping their hearts out. And then you've got Jamil kidnapping prostitutes to make a fake boy. Like... <laughs> There's just... There's a lot. There's a lot going on. This is crazy shit. This town is insane. I mean, there's a lot of little plot lines here. But yet they've done really well at kind of tying them together, keeping them in the little mysteries and little things and like keeping it interesting. You know where I mean? You know what I mean? Where there's always like, okay, oh, the prostitutes are going missing. Okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden, oh, that was Jamil stabbing all the prostitutes. Okay. Okay, and Lucas is Boro stabbing that. Oh, and then there's also the suicide -y things. And then there's the... Oh, my God. And then there's just all these little layers that keep expounding. All the while investigating the curse, which is the huge thing. And they could have just stuck with that with other slighter... But no, they just kept layering. They were like, let's just throw more shit on this cake. And it's like, this fucker's about to topple, but it's kind of amazing. We're all going to get diabetes from all the layers of sugar in this. And I don't mean good, like, but you know what I mean? Like, it's a crap cake, but like, there's so many, when you're thinking of a cake, you're thinking of sugary layers of frosting and shit, right? And there's so much of that, it's about to topple over and kill us all, so. Anyway. Yes, of course. It's troubling if the source of the problems really is the curse. Well, I mean, that's the underlying layer. A bunch of other shit on top of it, but... That lout working at the Institute would probably argue that it's all superstition with no scientific basis. Lout? You mean Cyan Brophies? I haven't heard many good things about him. He's ridiculously handsome. Bit of a douche, but he's hot, so... <sighs> he pinned me up against a wall. I'm here for it. Dolphe's eyes communicated to Salome that he wasn't con connected to Cyan, but... If I could somehow get him on our side, it'd be a huge help since he's the most brilliant and powerful man in Arpichel. Maybe I can get in contact with him if I submit a faked reliver application. Don't! I absolutely will not allow it! I cannot let either of you go near such a dangerous person! Well, that's true because... Right? Adolfe, if he went and they took his blood, they'd realize there's something up with him. And she's been protecting us. She was originally going to hand us over to science lab rats and then was like, no, I can't. The tone of her voice lowered. Adolfe, I've been telling you this since you were little, but it still seems like you don't fully understand your worth. Can you imagine what might have happened if you were found out? Oh, if you were found by another reliver? He immediately kept his mouth shut. It seems like he might know that he's immune, to be fair. Because now this conversation makes me wonder if he knows. The instincts have developed, he developed in childhood warned him that he should never go against her when she was in this state. It's good to be responsible, but since you joined the Corps, you've become quite reckless. Once those incidents are resolved, why not leave the Corps and have Eve become the next leader? Surely by now it's become difficult to hide your lifespan and physical condition, hasn't it? Yeah, okay. Okay, so he knows. He knows he's immune to the curse. I, I'm, I'm going to get like this. This is pretty much handing it to you. 
Because it was always like a question, like, does he know? Like, he's not going to become a reliver. He's going to live longer than us. Like, maybe he's, it's just one of those things. But it's like, does does he know? It kind of hints that maybe he does. But this is definitely like a, he fucking knows. And that's why he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to die before you. He knows he's not going to fucking die. You know? Well, if you keep this up, Spacey will begin to notice one day. Even confessing the truth to her now would be a shock. So you should prepare for that conversation in a better environment. I understand. Um, but for now, I want to focus on my work first. Salome looked slightly surprised to hear Adolfe's response. Whenever she brought up the subject, he would usually change the subject or simply stay quiet. I'm wondering if, you know, he was dumped on the beach. He wasn't really. He was found on the beach. True, but not dumped by his parents because, like, the drifter came and lived a long life, didn't he? Like, because he wasn't affected. Well, he started to become affected. Didn't he? Like, but like, you know, I mean, I'm just wondering if Adolfe isn't from around here. And that's why he's kind of like immune or, or something, somehow. Anyway. A few minutes later, Salome saw Adolfe off with a gentle, loving smile when he gave the simplest of acknowledgments as he left. While well, he gave, sorry. From the garden blooming with lycrises, the lovely, the lively voices of children echoed as they shouted their goodbyes. Does that child really think he's able to keep secrets from his mother? Her smile disappeared. I thought he wouldn't make any reckless decisions if Spacey was with him. I wonder what's made him want to pursue the curse. Perhaps someone's pressuring him to take action. It was difficult to imagine any normal person discovering the truth behind the curse that eluded even the understanding of a genius. But... The ethics of this country are terribly weak. We should not be so reliant on reliver technology. We must put in effort to live life like the humans outside of this country. I want to save the people by lifting the curse. The reliver-obsessed royal family must be abolished. It's as if those who have taken over the goal I've worked toward for years. I suspected that Spacey or Adolfe were either death reborn or related to death. It was unthinkable that I could have ever considered offering them to Cyan as test subjects during our collaboration. Of course, such a thought never returned after I realized how much I loved them. They're such beautiful souls. Nothing had changed in all these decades. The number of supporters who once... Oh, okay, so we're still Salome. It should just say Salome because, like, it went from narrator to not... Anyway. The number of supporters who once shared my goals had dwindled, dwindled considerably. Cyan was now focused on developing more resilient relivers who could last longer than their current lifespan. But even if he were to be successful in creating relivers that could withstand the curse, could one actually call such a person a real human? The people of Arpachel now saw immediate revival after death to be normal and had few objections about dying at 23. I myself had been affected by becoming a reliver. The more I saw people discard their bodies as disposable vessels, the more I felt empty and unable to live with the passion I once had. I wonder if all I've been doing has been for nothing. I did what I could to try and retain my emotions and connections with others. Perhaps there's no one left in the country who wishes to live a normal human life. Sound of the wall... Oh, God, we're still Salome. It's just weird because it went from narration to just her. I don't know. The sound of the wall clock startled me. I shouldn't be thinking so negatively now. I knew what I was facing when I decided to uncover the truth. Mother! I needed to fulfill my promise to him. No matter how many decades, even if it takes a hundred years... 
I will find a way to break the curse. I could not abandon the noble mission my original self began. I needed to annihilate the curse and the filthy royal family. I feel like that goes back to, like, the queen, blah, blah, blah. Are she the queen? Is she part of the royal family? Listen, we thought we were, like, in science, right? You're like, is she Cyan's sister? Because he had a sister. That never came out. That doesn't mean she's not part of the royal family and she ran away. You know what I mean? Because they never really gave us too much more backstory aside from they created a bond, like, her and Cyan, you know, started this kind of collaboration, whatever. But, like, how did they get to know? Like, I don't think they explained that. I would revive as many times as necessary, even if it destroyed me. Sorry, buddy. Ugh! I don't know who that was, but... Oh, probably Nadia. <coughs> well, I mean, this is Lucas, but we're with Nadia. Lucas! Are you alright, brother? I I'm fine. It's just the usual coughing. I should be better shortly. Ugh. Brother! It's gotten worse. Lucas, I'll have a room prepared so you can rest there for today. It's too severe to be managed with medicine, so I'll take care of you personally. No, I'm fine. I can't let my symptoms interrupt a little the little time I have with Nadia. Please stop, brother. You have to listen to Dr. Campesine. I suggest you follow Nadia's advice if you don't want to sadden her. And do you intend to shorten your remaining time even further? I understand. I need you to simmer down, bird. Sit down and stop moving around. You're fidgety and you're driving me bonkers. Stop it. Sorry, Nadia. I'll return first thing tomorrow morning. Be a good girl and rest. Brother. Don't look like that. I'll be fine. You know very well that your brother is as strong a person strong as a person can be. I'll be by your side until the very end, and no matter what. Okay. Thank you so much. I love my kind dear brother. Love you too, dear Nadia. Please live as long as possible for your brother's sake. Let's get going. You can hold on to my shoulder. Sounds like my brother is already prepared to die. Your brother, I actually want to be with you for much, much longer. I don't want you to leave me behind. I want you to hold my hand when my time comes. If only my brother had more time to live. I suppose the other patients and even the doctor would laugh and say how silly my wish is. But why? Is it really so selfish to wish for happiness? I don't know who's saying it can't be it's not selfish at all it's a natural human desire that everyone shares is this dot oh fuck yeah okay i when we came popped over to nadia and like lucas was leaving i'm like man i really fucking hope dot shows the fuck up here he can't be it's not selfish at all it's a natural human desire that everyone shares you can't tell it's dot if they don't put the little star at the end he has yet to have the little star at the end of his fucking conversation points like he's had in every other route i'm gonna i'm like game negative point here like what the fuck dot can't be dot if he's not putting a little fucking star in his conversations okay uh, <laughs> sorry for intruding i came to visit someone i know i just happened to hear you talking from the hallway but I'm not some suspicious guy or anything. Really? I'm really not selfish, am I? My brother accepts that he'll die soon, but... I don't think he should. I want him to live as long as possible. Am I a selfish girl for wanting that? Well, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but... You want your brother to live a long life. Not as a reliver, but as a normal human being, right? I don't see anything wrong with that at all. It's only natural to want our loved ones to live long lives and share happy memories with us. What? Why are you crying? Uh, what did I do? I can't believe I made a girl way younger than me cry. Someone help me. Get Dodd freaking out. She's like, that was so nice of you. And she... <sighs> I love him so much. 
I feel like Dahood is the tiny secret little MVP of the whole game. Because no matter what has happened, he has always just been a little gem, okay? He has never let us down. Nadia didn't let us down, but Capucine destroyed her. So, like, you know, she, did, like. Dodd only in the one bad ending just was like, I can't believe what I have done and just disappeared. But, okay, here's the thing. So, right. So, like. Adolfe or anyone else who becomes a reliver, like, he does it now. He's 21 years old. He becomes a reliver. His next body is 21 years old. Right? And, like, it depends on whenever you get your backup done. Dahut's 15. He got his backup done. But, like, now, okay, so you let's just say, okay, now I'm 15. Do you never, your clone body never ages past that? So he's gonna, like, it's not like, oh, okay, cool. I can age ever. Like, he never ages. He's just 15 forever. Kind of fucking sucks. Yeah. Hmm. You should kind of find relivers that can actually age. You know what I mean? Like grow old, and then you're like, cool, that's okay. Now I got the backup of my body from when I was 25, and then we get to we get to do it all over again. Like if you really wanted to. You know? But not like just stay 15 forever. That would suck. Anyway. You not only did you scavenge through my house, you also scribbled all over my damn notebook. <gasps> I love this CG so fucking much. Adolphe just grabbing scruff of the back of the neck of his future self. They are like, this is hilarious. Hilarious. The hell are you going to do about this? I had my schedule for the whole damn month in there. It's your fault for leaving them in the midst of someone you do not trust. You should thank me for not touching your money or diary. Why, you! Shortly before dinner was served, Adolve was pounding the table and shouting at Anko, who interested himself in the utensils he was fiddling with. When did you do that, Anko? I'm sorry, Adolve. I didn't notice at all, even though we were in the same room. Now, dear princess, there's no need to apologize. That's for me to say! You're the damn culprit, so you've got no right... Uncle played with his hair without much regard for the anger being directed at him, only offering a dismissive, yes, yes. Anyway, dear princess. Anyway! There's no reason to be so timid around me. Huh? You and I are kindred souls. I fear unbearably lonely at the thought that you would treat me as a stranger. And just consider me on go. You can even speak to me as casually as this loud man here. Well, I'd be too embarrassed since we haven't known each other long. She just keeps calling him Anko, though, so I'm just assuming does she, like, call him Anko-san in, like, Japanese? Like, you know? Besides, this is just the way I am with everyone other than my family at the orphanage. And then at least say my name with a smile. B but I, well, I suppose I can do that. I didn't have enough courage to disobey someone hundreds of years older than me. I took a deep breath and tried to look him directly in the eye with a smile. On... Um, Ko? What is it, my dear princess? I didn't know what to say after that. Well, that is, I guess... I'm feeling embarrassed now. Are you? I'm very pleased to see your lovely, blushing face. I like the fact that he's like, oh, those dirty thoughts you have in your head, and then he's all over here flirting like a whore. Jesus! Oh, don't tease me like that. As I looked down to hide my red cheeks, Adolfe suddenly slammed his cup down onto the table. Well, I have something to say to you, Anko! <laughs> I just yelled it! It's all in caps! Anko's face quickly scrunched in disgust. Don't chew my headset. I prefer that you never say my name without permission. Somehow the sound of it is infuriating. It's my way of being nice. If you don't like it... I'll gladly refer to you as Creep. You spineless brat. That's Adolfe to you. Here we go again. I fucking love it so goddamn much. It was actually pretty funny to watch the two of them go at it, but it really is. If neither of you has plans to eat, should I just clear the table? No, that was not my... Sorry. 
I shouldn't be doing this now. Two quickly straighten up in their seats, which was incredibly adorable. I love you, but stop chewing my headset. Simmer the fuck down. Anka first reached out to my specialty, a bowl of stew. Uh-huh. We had it yesterday, so I actually wanted to prepare a different dish, but... I desire to enjoy your specialty, dear princess. Because he remembers it. Because he's a dolphin. He's, I told you! What did I say earlier? Like, it'd be kind of interesting if she made the stew and he's like, Oh, I love this so much! And you're like, same Z's. You, me, same person. Because of his request, I decided to serve stew again with a slightly different ingredients. With slightly, sorry. Onko is like in chillax clothes. Sir, is your shirt see-through? Because I think your shirt is see-through. And now he's doing the hand over the mouth, but he's, we can actually see his hand over his mouth. After a momentary silence, Onko slowly brought the spoonful of stew to his mouth. In the next moment, I think it's so funny that... He, oh, oh, hi, hi! You're trying to take after Cyan and be a little... Look at that! Your shirt's a little unbuttoned. I can see your tummy. Or... <laughs> in the next moment he just shook fuck you tell me he's not fucking a dolphin if he just shook like a dolphin did his little sprite just shook his little sprite just shook okay and she pointed out hard and fast before oh I noticed this little thing about a dolphin always shakes when he enjoys food and whatever and Anko just fucking did it no, I'm sorry, they're the same motherfucking person. There is nothing that you can convince me otherwise that they're not if that if he just did that. Stop it. He stopped. After trembling slightly, he sat still with a serious look on his face. Yeah. Unko, did you not like it? Girl, how did you not notice that? Uh no. Just simply I was simply oh it? I was simply startled by how, del how delicious it is. It's been hundreds of years since I've tasted food so exquisite. Because I've been dead for that long. I'm telling... Oh my god, oh my god, done. We're done, we're done. They're, it's not, they're, they're 100% the same fucking person. You're just flattering me. But I'm still happy you enjoy it. Thank you very much. After a short delay from Unko's response, Adolfe also began to eat a stew in silence. Let's see if he shakes. He didn't, but... So it's not just tobacco, but food in general that you enjoy. It is impossible for me to eat much, but I can enjoy a normal meal. All the more if it was prepared by my dear princess. Oh. I usually consume those bland... Redacted. So having something warm to eat is delightful in itself. I don't know if Lycrises would fit there. Why? Oh, why? Oh. Maybe? I can't figure out how to spell that in my head now. I don't know, maybe. Uh, and he's glitching. Oh, really? I'm forbidden from saying that as well. Having once again been disrupted, Anko ran his fingers over his throat with frustration. My hell was that? Uh, come to think of it, this is the first time you've heard it, Adolfe. Unko said that his voice gets interrupted when he when his messages interfere with the human world. I did my best to explain as simply as possible what happened when we first met. So you really aren't human. I've said so many times already. I'm also unable to discuss what remains a mystery to the people of this world. Mystery... Which also meant, I know we were over time, but like we were in the middle of the dinner scene, so I figured I'd finish it. It seems like your messages are disrupted when we ask you something we don't know, but if we're able to learn the truth ourselves, does that mean we can talk to you without interference? Yes, that is correct. Ah, so when we figure out the people and then everything, and then we can, we'll get the redacted unredacted. Got it. What a pain in the ass. Now, do not say that. I'm not purposely trying to obscure my message. Of course, it would be much simpler if I could do away with that inconvenience. He must be referring to the source of the interference. Now we'll stop, so there we go. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, but like Anko shaking 
We, you could go back and see this little sprite when jiggle, 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 and she's like, oh, he trembled. No, girl, you you were consciously aware, but it didn't occur to you. I mean, I guess it wouldn't. Like, it's going to hit her at some point and be like, wait, wait, you do that. Wait, wait. I'm going to guarantee you anything. Like, later on in the game, when it's revealed, whatever, she's going to be like, oh, my God, you did tremble when you ate my food. And Adolfe is going to be like, huh? And she's like, you always get a little, you shake when you enjoy food. And like, it's something I know. And he's like, wait, you notice that? About I do. Like, it's a weird little quirk that he didn't know he had, but she's noticed. And oh my motherfucking God. There's no way they're not the same fucking person now. I'm sorry. Like, there's, there's not. I know they're trying to throw things like Anko poking around in Adolfe stuff, like figuring him out and everything. It seems a little weird if they're the same person, but you fuck, there's no way you're not now. But that whole, like, wanting to, like, I want your best meal. Give me your, what your what's your thing that you're best at cooking? Because he knows what it fucking is. And then he did a little shake. Like Adolfe does his little shake. No, stop it. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.